So uh, in my line of work, we are often obliged to taste wines from barrel. And I think as wine consumers, you probably see a lot of tasting notes of wines that are still during their lavage, their maturation in barrel. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the sort of technical uh, factors that go into tasting from barrel. It's really, it's not the same as tasting from bottle. That's something that you know, anyone can do. Um, obviously, that's what wine's for. Tasting from barrel is, is, is a much more technical exercise, uh, and it helps to have a lot of information about the wine. So I'm tasting one of my own wines here. This is um, an Alligator from 2021, which uh, last saw suffered outside on October 2nd, 2021. So, you know, that's one of the first variables that's quite interesting to know when you're tasting from barrel. When did a wine last see uh, a sulfite addition? Because sulfites will uh, shut down the wine aromatically, will tighten them up texturally, but they'll also uh, mask any sort of perception of overripeness or flabbiness in the wine. So it can be, it can be kind of challenging. Another thing that's important to know, uh, the temperature of the cellar. Right now we're at about eight degrees. So again, eight degrees, wine's pretty cold, uh, yeah, that will exaggerate the perception of tannin and acidity. That will diminish perception of, of elevated maturity again. So if you're tasting vintages like, say, 2020 Red Burgundy, which is quite an extreme vintage in barrel, so it was always very interesting to know when did la wine last see sulfides, uh, what, what sort of temperature is the sample at, because uh, it can be, very, can be very deceptive. Other things to note, this wine has never been ranked, uh, so it's still pretty charged with carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon dioxide, again, ex exaggerates the perception of tannin in, in red wines uh, and also can, tends to kind of diminish the perception of duration of, of the wine's finish. So it can make the wine seem a bit clipped uh, and make it seem a bit firmer than it actually is. Uh, I think it's, that exaggerates, obviously, the perception of, of dry extract in white wine, which is incidentally why champagne uh, grapes are pressed whole bunches to, to minimize the amount of, amount of dry extract that they, that they bring, bring into the wines. Um, so also, you know, you would think after 14 months uh, sans souffre, it would be um, in a more of an oxidative phase. In fact, it's not. It's in a slightly reductive phase right now after them having got pretty cold in the winter. That's, a, that's something that changes how wine tastes in barrel immeasurably. Uh, reduction obviously masks aromas. In red wines, you can get a sort of black currant leaf aroma that comes into the wine, sort of sometimes rather animal coffee grit like aromas that some, sometimes people confuse with the um, Britannomyces. In white wines it brings a sort of smoky, toasty, gunpowdery, fireworky sort of smell to the wines that, that people find desirable in many cases, but which mask the underlying fruit aromas, it's clear, on the palate, makes the wine seem a bit more compact. Again, it exaggerates the perception of tannin, makes it a bit more chunky. Uh, and diminishes length on, on the finish. So really useful to be able to, to ascertain whether a wine is a bit reduced or not when you're tasting it from barrel. Um, and it's, hopefully it's not an issue you encounter from bottle. It's much rarer to find wines be reduced in bottle. I mean, and producers are generally trying to avoid that, that's for sure. Uh, and, and what else? Uh, obviously this is, this is from a new barrel in this case. So again, when you're tasting barrel by barrel in Burgundy, are you tasting a new barrel or once used old barrel? Uh, that, that, that's an important thing to know. What, to what extent is it actually representative of what the finished blend will be? And also, where are you in the Yellow Vash? Um, 2021, you know, so this was harvested, as I said, October 2nd. Now, um, the 2022 vintage that followed was rather early. And so people began tasting 2022s, uh, uh, 2021s rather, people began tasting them after the 2022 vintage professionally. So they're tasting them rather early, wines from a rather late vintage. So when you compare the amount of time the wines had had in barrel compared to 2020s, the wines had about a month and a half left in barrel. Um, so so you're, you're essentially you're tasting the wines at different phases, and that can really influence how they show. 2020s, after the harvest of 2021, had had plenty of time in barrel, and were really showing very nicely from barrel. I think a lot of um, 2021s, we're still in the process of taking on some mid palate fat and, and weight and generally becoming a bit more polished, a bit more uh, put together at the time when, when they were tasted by a lot of uh, critics. And obviously it's not flattering for a vintage to be tasted early. So, uh, so that's also very important. Essentially, so there are all these different variables, all these things to think about. And this is why barrel tasting, I would say, is uh, certainly an art rather than a science, because all the, the variables in their own right uh, have an obvious impact and you can make sense of them, but it's re you're really tasting a wine from barrel, you're trying to make adaptations and compensations as it were for all of those different 
uh, factors assemble together and then make some sort of overall judgment about the wine's ultimate character and quality. So it's a very inexact science also, I think uh, that's why I prefer to call it an art. And frankly, I think it's, it's such a technical exercise that it would be better if a lot of wines were shown exclusively from bottle. Um, you really have to have uh, thought about some of those issues to be able to do it. Uh, if there's one key to doing it well, I would say, from my point of view, it's looking at the wine from a point of view of texture and structure. Uh, aromatics can be very um, mutable during a barrel tasting, from day to day, week to week, time of atmospheric pressure, whatever, and all, and all the other things I talked about. Whereas the palate of the wine tends to give you more clues. Uh, so, so the old-fashioned way of tasting in barrel from Burgundy and other wine regions was actually to use a little sort of silver saucer, uh, which of course completely ruins the the aromas of the wine, you can't smell very much at all. You can see its clarity because the silver catches the light and you can get a very good impression of its texture and structure in the palate. And it's not so stupid. So, so you know, I, again, you'd, every cellar you visit, the, the wine glass is different. And that's a variable. If you're looking at the aromas, very important. If you're looking at the palate, they're a bit less important. So I actually don't mind tasting from, from these little uh, goblets like this because it forces you to focus on the palate. And I think that that is the key. If there's a key to successful barrel tasting, it's to focus on the palate.